All right. So what if a contractor says, well, you know, that, that information is not up to date. I mean, this is, you know, we always get the most recent stuff and we just got this from their website and blah, 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 blah. blah. I mean, what do you say to that? So I think I still say it's like, well, I have something in writing from them. You need to get something in writing to combat that. Just like if an engineer came out and gave a stamped report, it's, you have to combat that with a stamped engineer report. So we provide documentation directly from the city and county, and we're also a third party. Um, you know, what we've done in the past, we've recommended it to the adjuster say, listen, if you disagree with it, what I would recommend is taking whatever you have and submitting it to one click. They usually turn around in 24 hours, 40, 24 to 48 hours. They'll be able to verify it for you, whether or not that's accurate or not. They have their, they have a whole entire data team that has is set up to be able to research this for us, not just one person. So we ask, we actually ask if anything comes up to come to email us and we'll do some research to make sure we are correct, which, you know, 99.997% of the time we are accurate. My name is Garrick. I'm the founder and CEO of One Click Code. Um, one Click Code is a aggregator of building codes across the United States. Uh, we were the first ones to be able to do that successfully. Um, our product uh, is um, heavily used in both the contracting and adjusting world. Um, we are um, our product is to be able to quickly identify the both the jurisdiction, meaning who has permitting authority, as well as provide building codes that are specific to creating accurate and defensible estimates. Um, just think about it as just uh, you know you type into the address like it's it's Google search and Google knows you're an adjuster and we return everything you want to know about that roof and the things you need to put in that estimate. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this before in our, our previous interview. I mean, I, it's things like this that I think it seems like a small thing, but, yeah. and I don't know that adjusters maybe even realize it, you know, on our side that having a well-documented file, especially in places where there's a lot of codes and there's, there's code coverage under the policy, you have to have that stuff in there. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. we can, let's definitely talk about, um, you know, getting the file done right the first time and kind of the importance of that. So if you could kind of speak to that a little bit as far as, I mean, even on the contracting side, you know, you don't want to have to keep going back and forth. Nobody wants to do that. Right. No it costs, cost time and money to that. Um, but, but I mean, what I, I, so my background is logistics. So before I got into the roofing industry and I would say into the adjusting world, I was in logistics. And so my goal was to be able to get to point A to point Z, not point B, but point Z as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. And so when I, when I entered the contracting world, I just felt like it was just like my, everything was being turned upside down there. Nothing made sense. Why does it take six months to finish a claim? Why does it, why can't I just get things done tomorrow? And as our society, you know, head towards the hurdle of, you know, two days is like the exception is the expected. Now we're getting like today deliveries. And so how, why can't we have stuff done today? And in, 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 in the adjusting contracting world, we still, we will, uh, we still suffer the fact of we, we really want to be able to get things done as quickly as possible. Um, so I've struggled with that too. These days, and I, and I, I think that, that you're kind of hitting on an important point, and that is, is that you're, with the technology that we have, there really isn't a, no, or any excuse for not having same day or like, you know, uh, really, really fast turnaround, really fast cycle times. And because of, yeah. you know, a, when you develop a tool like you have or um, hover, you know, they develop a tool where you walk in mm -hmm. the house and you take insured can take eight pictures of the house and it kicks back a roof diagram that's accurate down to a square from the ground. I mean, that's amazing. Right. So we have all these right. tools these days and it's it's uh, one of the things that we try to do on Adjuster TV is, is to kind of provide awareness to our market for these tools to make us much more effective in the field. Um, and I think that, you know, one click code is truly, I mean, it's, it's, well, I've said it before, I think it's a game changer in this regard. Um, so let's talk about jurisdiction for a little bit. So, you know, you had said kind of that, uh, um, understanding jurisdiction is the first piece of the puzzle. Um, how does jurisdiction kind of help you have an, a more accurate estimate? Yeah. So we, you know, this is something that I didn't 
really realize until I was in Colorado. I, I traveled around the country and I, you know, I always look at the address and then at the address, I see this name. Like, okay. That's got to be the city code. So that's what I would apply, whether it's an adjuster or a contractor. But slowly started realizing that, you know, that even though there was a city name, in the address, but that doesn't mean that they actually had jurisdiction. And so what I, then I discovered that even if you're in the County, you still get assigned a city name. So that means that if you're looking just at the address, you don't know for sure who has jurisdiction over that property. It could be the County. It could be the township. It could be the city. It could be something that defaults to the County. So there's, there's different things that go into who has authority over that property, which gets into jurisdiction. And that is a driver of cost because of the building codes that that are uh, that are attributed to those uh, certain municipalities. And during our research, and what we found is that over almost forty percent of the properties within the United States do not fall within the city um, that are actually listed in the address. Meaning they fall outside of that. They're actually in the county. You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name? Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Paysetter Claim Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Paysetter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, You'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, file review automation, and a fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. And Paysetter is bringing training to a city near you. Check out their summer tour dates at adjustertv.com slash Paysetter. So that means if the county codes are wrong and they're less restrictive, you could be overpaying on that claim. Vice versa, if the county codes are more restrictive, you could be underpaying on that claim. Either way, there could be a huge void in the actual accuracy of, in, of that estimate. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that you know if, if we talk about kind of uh, who that all benefits, I mean obviously it's going to benefit the contractor because they're going to you know they're going to have a be able to get the work done and have you know meet their profit margin, be able to pay their guys, buy the materials and all that stuff, and have it be an accurate estimate so that they're not having to pick up a shortfall someplace. Um, it helps the obviously the, on the carrier side, I think, because they're not going to be overpaying necessarily, um, or underpaying, which, you know, we talk about this all the time on this channel, carriers will get more mad at, at an adjuster if they miss damage or if they underpay than if they have, a, a, you know, an overwrite every now and then. Um, and then obviously it helps the insured because then they're, they're getting made whole faster and without having to, you know, f fight with the insurance company, which is what people expect, right? And I think that, you know, we talk about the, the customer service um, kind of aspect on the carrier side, they are absolutely obsessed with customer service and whether they're gonna be able to keep that customer and have that customer refer their company. So when the customer goes through a claims process, that they're expecting, have an expectation because of conventional wisdom that they're gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna, insurance company is not gonna pay or they're gonna take their time, they're gonna, you know, not pay enough or they're going to try and, you know, cheat them out of money or whatever. And they're going to drag out the process. Those are the two big things that, that the two right. big things that people think is going to happen in the claims process. And when it doesn't, you know, then they're happy with the process. The work's done. They look and they see everything's finished. They didn't have to fight. It was a low stress or no stress experience for them. Then they're going to be, you know, talking over the fence that, you know, in the summertime to their neighbor while they're mowing their yards and say, Hey, you know, looks like you got your roof done. Well, you know, my insurance company, who you got, you know, well, you should try my guy. Right. Um, that's what yeah. they want. And the littlest things. And again, I, you know, I keep saying it, it's, it seems like a small thing, but it's it really going to have a significant impact on not only the, the dollar amount for a claim, mm -hmm. but also in the process, right? Anytime you have to like, do a reinspection or do a, a major correction or have to go have a back and forth with a contractor or it reopens later, it costs resources. It costs people, 
you know, having to spend time to, to address that claim, maybe go back out and look at it. They may have to assign another field adjuster to go pay him travel, whatever, and then the extra money, right? And then if it, if it right. goes totally south, then it ends up in court and then the carriers are, you know, they're going to, it could it, it'd be, you know, several times what it should have been just because of the, the whole court situation and they got to get their attorneys involved and everything else. And so these little small things that we talk about, these tools um, have, a, have a major impact on, on the claims process and I think our industry as a whole. Um, and we talk about, you know, automation, right? So let's talk a little bit about um, how we can kind of play big with small tools, um, having automations you know, in our workflow that help us to be more effective and efficient as either, you know, as, in our case as adjusters, but I mean, even as contractors. Yeah, totally. I, I, I think about it as the tools is as simple as a pen and paper at, as a waitress. So let me give you an analogy uh, like this. So if we have the adjusting process and it's like you, you, you sit down and you get your menu, you're greeted, you, 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 you ask, they ask for your order, you get the food, it's a great meal. And then dessert comes and then dessert is just, it becomes bad. It comes, it comes late. There's, and it just keeps on happening over and over again. All you're going to remember is the bad experience with the dessert. So I think about this is the tools. Yeah, air the side of plate. But if we have the tools, if you have the adjustment, they come out, they have the tools they need. The the, 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 the adjuster goes out, gets on the roof, comes down and says, hey, your roofs can be replaced. Here's a check for $18,000. Customer's happy. That's the same amount of information that you got to the point of the dessert. And then all of a sudden you have a contractor come in and say, they missed this, they missed this, they missed this. This is not done. And then and all of a sudden there's supplements coming in on the back end and it's just now becomes that fight. And like now all the insured is going to remember is the bad dessert or the bad experience of not being able to close a claim. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And so the tools that come into that, being able to make sure you are accurate in your estimate up front is something that I, 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 I can only say that needs utmost importance. Like Eagle view was a game changer before Eagle view came into the picture and hover is now there too. But let's think about 2008 when hurricane Ike came through, that's when state farm decided to roll out, um, Eagle view nationwide in that rollout, they were able to reduce, uh, my understanding somewhere around 80% of the reinspections associated with scope discrepancies over the size of the roof. That's incredible if you think about that. So before we have these today, the today's world, if you guys go back in time, it was all about are the measurements correct? They weren't worried about as much about line items as they were about how can I negotiate over squares? So you fast forward today and now everything's about, you missed this line item, you missed the scope of damage and everything's being nitpicked. And so having the tools up front and the photographs and the being able to identify the building codes and even some of the insurance insurance policies are saying, Hey, there's scheduled roof depreciation. How old's the roof? Now I got to go do research and figure out when was the last permit on this house. So there's all tools that go into both measurements of the roof and data around, you know, identifying the age and condition of that roof to be able to create an accurate and defensible estimate. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and you bring up a, a good point there. I mean, it's, um, there's a, there's kind of a cottage industry in on the contracting side. That's all about supplements, right? There, there are yes a, a lot of con restoration contractors, a lot of roofing contractors that have a whole division. That's just, supplements only right and so they're going to send they're going to try and send every file that they can back for some kind of a mm -hmm. supplement because there's there's a profit that they can make there um and i think you know we for for especially for new folks when you're trying to figure out ways to reduce reinspections and having to deal with supplements yes. building codes 
you know, measurements, you know, the measurements thing is, is kind of declining a little bit, which is good because, you know, we've got good, accurate tools for it now. Um, mm -hmm. But they'll, they'll, like you said, they'll nitpick on every small little thing. So I think that's, you know, when we talk about pain points, um, for, especially for new adjusters, I, I think that if, if new adjusters who are who don't have a whole lot of experience can be intimidated by the reinspection process and having to do supplements um, and having a tool like this where you're like, if you can point to something and say, it says right here that actually we don't have to pay for that, you know, or do you know what I mean? So it's, it's actually a very, it's a very like, um, what do you, what do you call it? It's a, it's, it's a great feeling to be able to say, uh, actually, no, I don't have to. This right yeah, here right? says that it's not required rather than having that question in the back of your mind. Like, do I have to? And jurisdiction plays a big role in that. So having the tools to identify jurisdiction, identify the building codes. And if you can include the permit fee up front, that will reduce. So if, if okay, let's, well, this is my mindset. If you can reduce the threshold that is currently in the minds of supplementers, and the, it, it can differ, right? But let's say that this the price discrepancy is $700 or $1,000. If that's what they're thinking, then they might not send it off to a third-party supplementer to send in for a reinspection. But as soon as you get, you remove code items, you remove the permit fee, you're starting to increase that discrepancy that now allows somebody to have profit in being able to ask for more money. Right. And so I'm, what I'm thinking is, is the tools can allow not only a defensible estimate and a more accurate estimate to, to, to be able to pay for the right things up front, but also reduces the reinspection because there's no, there's no incentive really for them to come back and say, hey, you missed all these items. Are you new to the industry and wondering how you can get started as an independent adjuster with little or no experience? I mean, how can you get any experience if you can't get any experience, right? It's a problem as old as time in any profession. While you may have heard of the IA firm and insurance recruiting specialists at the best IRS, the IRS stood for Insurance Recruiting Specialists. However, The Best recently did a complete rebrand that better reflects their company goals, changing their name to The Best Claims Solutions. Because there has been a considerable increase in task-driven solutions requested by The Best Claims' clients, adjusters can now get their foot in the door and gain experience with The Best Claim Solutions, The Best Inspect program. Not only that, but The Best Claims also offers continuous training to you, the adjuster, and their compliance department helps keep you current on your licenses so you'll never find yourself hitting the pause button on a deployment while you re-up your licenses. When you sign up for The Best Claims' roster, you'll be in contact with a dedicated recruiter who will learn more about your skills, experience, and areas of expertise. And once you're onboarded, anytime that there's an opening that fits your skill set, you'll get a call right away. At The Best Claims, their services are 100% completely free for candidates. Once you're on the roster, you'll have access to independent adjusting opportunities around the country so that you can select what's right for you. Get access to the totally free top five tips for preparing for a hurricane deployment video guide over at adjustertv.com slash the best claim. Watch the top five tips for preparing for a hurricane deployment for free right now by going to adjustertv.com slash the best claims. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, it's, we, as far as like defensible estimates go, I mean, I think adjusters, especially if you're talking about cat deployments, I mean, it can be a little bit run and gun and adjusters can feel like mm -hmm. they're kind of, they're just there by themselves. They may not have to go into an office um, for any reason. And they may, it's just, they just feel like, I mean, you get to, to kind of feeling like you're sort of like a solo, you know, sort of operator, just like you're making mm -hmm. your own schedule, you're writing your own this, you're making your phone calls and days, you know, they days just roll by. But that file, is you have the adjusters, no matter what, they're, they're on a team, right? Even if they don't see those team members necessarily or, or, or interact directly with them, that file uh -huh. goes, is going to be looked at by several other people. And if it go, comes up that it needs to go to court for whatever reason or goes to appraisal or arbitration, they have to be able to, de to defend that file. Why did you do X, Y, and Z? You know, why did you put this in your activity diary? Um, and having that kind of, you know, the, the jurisdiction and the, you know, having the correct codes in there to, to, to make sure that the coverage is correct and paid for properly um, really goes a long way to helping with that process, you know, 
never mind the poor desk adjuster that seven months from now with the insured finally is like, you know what, let's, let's call a contractor and get this roof taken care of. And the contractor comes out and says, well, I missed this, 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 and this, that desk adjuster, he may be, he or she may be 2,500 miles away, you know, from wherever that cat site was. And, uh, they weren't on site. They don't have the benefit of being there and looking at it themselves. Maybe the pictures aren't that great. Right. And, then they got this contractor hammering them for this extra money and they're looking at the measurements and they're like, well, I don't see, you know, so then it, it creates extra work for people down downstream and having been on the, the carrier side for a little while, I know what having like a pile of work on your desk looks like. I mean, it's, it causes stress and a lot of companies have higher turnover on the, for their inside adjusters because they have so much work to do. And a lot of it has to do with, these little things that, you know, even having a, one file pop up on your, in your queue that has a couple of little things that may take 20 minutes to address or two hours, that's time from the 67 other claims that you've got stuff to do work on, right? So I don't know. I mean, I, this kind of thing is like, it's, for me, I, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a benefit all the way around. You know, if, if carriers can, you know, for, for tools like this, if they can hang on to their um, their staff, it's expensive to hire people, right, and train them. Um, if they can hang on to people because they're not so overwhelmed with all this, for stuff that should, should have stayed closed the first time, right, um, they save money on, on that way. They save customers because the customer's not having to deal with the reinspection process and, do, and j dealing with supplements and everything else. And it's just, it makes everybody happy all the way around. Um, so as far as like uh, um, getting clo claims closed quickly, like how can, how can a tool like this, do you think, could it help cycle time? So one click code is, you know, unique in, in its ability to be able to process and pull data that is required to essentially speed up the, uh, the estimating process associated with building codes sales tax and now we're going to be implementing permits so imagine being able to reduce the time from calling the building official or reviewing documents that are being supplied by a contractor and looking for their if they're authentic right so that's that's the interesting thing is they can be you know a lot there's a lot of games that go on with contractors and providing documentation that's not accurate that just happens and not only just not accurate but it can be doctored so the quite you are always responsible for making sure that your your estimates complete full defensible and you're documenting it correctly that means you're going to go if they send you a document you're going to go verify it and that includes calling the city or county being able to figure out you know if these building codes are correct but first you got to figure out is it even in that city or is it actually in the county and that comes to the jurisdiction. So you could be calling and getting information for, for the right property, but they don't know that it's actually in the county and they're getting the codes wrong. So you could be adjusting the codes incorrectly. So that's how you can help uh, streamline the process. Our, our, our app can allow you to get the information you need to make those decisions within seconds. That's how quick it is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And again, I mean, you know, if it's something that an, an adjuster can incorporate into their workflow, um, and it's something that they include in the file as, as backup documentation, mm -hmm. and it doesn't take any extra time to, to do it. Um, this is something that, you know, on our side for adjusters, we're, again, it kind of comes back to we're not alone, right? And, and we're only as good as the last claim we did uh, or the last storm or whatever, or the last season we had. If an adjuster is consistently putting together a, a high quality file that has this really professional looking documentation in it that is accurate with you know the co the building codes, um, permits and all that stuff and jurisdiction and everything else. Um, that's good marketing for that adjuster for their career, right? Managers remember that. The carriers in particular remember that. And and again, I mean, adjusters are the we talk about this the first call list. That list is generated by the carrier. The carrier will say, you know, they'll call whatever so-and-so IA firm and say, hey, we got a big storm in Denver and we need 30 adjusters for to work these hail claims. And I'm gonna email over you a list of 10 people that we would like to, if they're available, we'd like you to send them over as part of that 30. 
that's the first call list because the, the carrier will look at that kind of thing. They'll look at the documentation because they're doing their own QA on the IA firm's stuff, on the, on the, on the IA firm's the independent adjusters that the IA firm sends on claims. They're reviewing their work as well because that's part of their contract and relationship with that IA firm the, the carrier has. Um, makes the IA firms look really good when their adjusters are, you know, being a little bit proactive and getting like this kind of documentation to back up their files. Um, it's something that helps the adjuster because they get on that first call list. And then that's, that's when that happens. That's when the IA firms say, you know, to me as an adjuster, um, we're going to keep you busy because this carrier, one of our big clients that keeps us, us busy, likes you and they want us to always send you on these events. So we're going to try to find a way to keep you busy so you don't run off to somebody else, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what happened in my career, which was very beneficial to my career. Um, so uh, like I said, I think it's, it's, uh, it's something that, that has a lot of different benefits um, for adjusters, whether they're new or experienced, um, and, and also benefits for the industry as a whole. The tools that make you look good. The tools that make you look good, for sure. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field, or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjusterpro right now no i think it has to do with accessing local knowledge i mean you as an adjuster you're almost at a disadvantage going into a, a, a different state a different county different city that you're not familiar with and you're dealing with people that are local how do you how do you how do you bring yourself up to their knowledge base associated with building codes things that are required as part of the estimating process you know here we don't we don't put pipe checks on, we put lead, we put lead on like, Oh, you know, like right. that's a new thing for me. There's, there's different things that different regions will use. There's so many things that you would have to be brought up to speed. How can we help you get up to speed faster, especially around the things that you're going to be, they're going to be critical of you on, which is ice and water shield. Imagine a roof ice and water shield. It's anywhere from $1,500 to four grand. You don't want to overpay that but you also don't want to underpay that. So, cause that, that can be fees that you otherwise wouldn't get. So you want to be accurate, but you don't want to be duped by a contractor that says, yeah, it's code here and you got to do it. This is the local thing. You got to do this. And then you find out it's not. And then you had the first five claims that you're like, hopefully the QA doesn't come behind and figure it out because I overpaid on those claims and I didn't realize it until claim six. How can we give you the local knowledge at a national scale? Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, it's, that's another benefit. I mean, it affects your an adjuster's fee schedule. So if you if you're looking at the codes and it says it's you have to put ice and water on everything three twelve and over in this this particular jurisdiction, then like you said, I mean that could be at least a thousand bucks and up to four or five thousand dollars that you're adding to the grand total of an estimate, and that's could knock you into the next tier on your fee schedule, right? For adding one line item to your right. estimate, um, which is significant. Right. And I think that goes for, I mean, it goes for any, any possible thing that you could also add to estimates that are required by code and that, you know, when the policy has that code coverage. And so like, let's say we go into, I think it's just all has to do with local, local knowledge at national scale. And that's going to be the quickest thing. Like if you're going into Minnesota, like everything's ice and water shield, everything's drip edge. Uh, actually, no, 
Um, drip edge is not required in drip in, in Minnesota for uh, residential. It's a little known fact, but it's not required. So how are you going to combat it? A uh, contractor's like drip edge is required on everything. And like, here, I'll show you the documentation. Here's the manufacturer specs. She's like, um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I have to do my own research and then I'm, I'm now I'm combating against and combating is kind of a strong word, but really I'm trying to show to contractors that keep on telling me over and over again, that drip edge is required. You're like, no, it's not. No, it's not. But instead of it being me as the adjuster saying, no, I can point to a third party, just like Eagle view says, Hey, it's 40 squares. I know you're at 50, but Eagle says 40. I'm sorry. I'm not going to pay anything more than 40 squares. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know, as far as like adding those things in, like contractors will say, well, you know, it's not required. You prove that it's not required, but then he'll come back and say, well, you know, I can't, we can't warranty our, our labor, uh, without, you know, putting all the pieces on, you know, certainty isn't going to warranty the roof unless we use their particular, you know, high profile Z Ridge and all this kind of stuff. Um, if it's not on there to begin well, with, I can't, you can't do it, but you don't, insurance companies don't owe for warranty unless there's an exist. There's, 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 there's things around that. I'm not going to go yeah. too much into detail about the warranty, but they don't owe for an increase in warranty. Right. So like, just because the, the you know, the, they claim that they have to have certain pieces. We are partnering with all of the manufacturers across the country. And so we actually have a report in there specifically around ice and water shield and drip edge. So based on what the, what the contractor is using, you can file another report with us and it'll actually tell you, does that manufacturer require drip edge as part of the basic installation requirements? Does it require ice and water shield as the basic installation requirements? And a little hint here, there actually is no uh, manufacturer that requires ice and water shield as part of the basic installation requirements for any man shingle manufacturer Yeah, that we yeah. know of today. Yeah. And so we have an actual report that if you type it in and you say it's GAF or Owens Corning, you can actually have a report that says not only is drip edge not required for say Owens Corning, neither is ice and water shield. I'm paying for neither. <laughs> exactly. So, t so talk yeah. a little bit about exactly how your application, your software works, like from, from a practical standpoint, when an adjuster needs to get some codes, how does it, how does it look? What is it? How does it, how does it work? So in the background, so we start off by having a platform, iOS, Android, or web. Really easy for anyone to access. There's a free trial you can download. It's 14 day trial. So you can get used to it, try it out, try it on your house, try it on any claims, try as many claims as you want nationwide, 14 days. On the, what you would do is enter in an address and then it returns like a Google search, all the things that we can produce for you associated with that roof. On the back end, what's happening is there's all these invisible lines that, that are called city boundaries, county boundaries, that is similar to school districts. You go into a school district, you're like, where the heck does this school district end or start? It's very similar for us being able to know where does the permitting authority, who has authority over this house and where does it start and end? And it's, it's very common to where where, you know, there's a division in a street just by a street going through it. One side is county, one side is city. You would never know the difference. We figure all that out for you. And we figure out what the sales tax is. Sales tax is more than just a zip code. It has to do with all these boundaries city and county boundaries as well. So we figure out that for you. We provide you with accurate uh, uh, rooftop, meaning address specific um, sales tax. We tell you who the permitting authority is in case you want to do the information or sorry, do additional research. Uh, that's the phone number, email address, who's the chief building official for you. And then we get into what an estimate would be require. So we say, does, does uh, this address require and the city require drip edge? Yes or no. Does it require ice and water shield? Yes and no. Is there any exceptions? Yes or no. Do you have documentation? So we actually go out and grab documentation on city official and county official letterhead and actually include that as part of our report. So you get a detailed report of the building codes that are required of the documentation of the city and county that's requiring it on their letterhead all with a single click and just by typing in an address. Just one click then? So just the, just the one. Yeah, it's just one click. <laughs> yeah, just one. So, yeah. um, and so, so for an adjuster, so, so they, they pull it up on their phone or their, you know, their smartphone gadget, right? And then do they just have that email to themselves, a PDF, and then attach that to the file or how's that work? 
Yeah. So if it's on their mobile phone, they can uh, just share it with themselves and they can email it to themselves and then they just attach it to the file. If they don't want to attach it, they just want to be able to pull it up real quick as reference while they're out in the field and, or a contractor say, Hey, ice and water shields required. Literally you just type in the address, boom, you can say, no, it's, re- it's not required. It actually just show them on the app or take a screenshot if you like. But the best case is to email yourself the report, which is actually a three to four page report of all the building codes. It includes the documentation from the, uh, the municipality as well. That's the easiest way. All right. So what if a contractor says, well, you know, that, that information is not up to date. I mean, this is, you know, we always get the most recent stuff and we just got this from their website and blah, 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 blah. blah. I mean, what do you say to that? If you're an auto claims adjuster or appraiser, you already know that SCA is one of the top companies that you can work for on the auto side. But if you're a property adjuster who's never done any auto, you may have never even heard of SCA. We've heard of them now. SCA Claim Services is launching their property division and they're poised to bring their decades of claims management experience and extensive resources to the property side of things. Insurance carriers already trust SCA because they know they will always receive a high level of customer service and policyholder satisfaction. And with literally millions of claims handled in SCA's four decade history, carriers trust SCA to help them avoid unnecessary costs by handling every claim every time with unparalleled accuracy and a commitment to doing things the right way. I mean, these guys are old school, right? Since 1979, SCA has been exceeding expectations. Only a company dedicated to serving and taking care of people, including their adjusters, can a company like this continue to grow in this industry. Join the team with industry-leading NPS scores and cycle times that has the resources to bring new opportunities for not only auto adjusters, but now for property adjusters. To get started with SCA Claim Services, head on over to adjustertv.com slash SCA. And while you're there, don't forget to download the totally free SCA Claim Services Field Adjuster Gear Guide. Again, that's adjustertv.com slash SCA to download the free gear guide and to apply. So I think I still say it's like, well, I have something in writing from them. You need to get something in writing to combat that. Just like if an engineer came out and gave a stamped report it's, you have to combat that with a stamped engineer report. So we provide documentation directly from the city and county, and we're also a third party. Um, you know, what we've done in the past, we've recommended to the adjuster say, listen, if you disagree with it, what I would recommend is taking whatever you have and submitting it to one click. They usually turn it around in 24 hours, 40, 24 to 48 hours. They'll be able to verify it for you, whether or not that's accurate or not. They have their, they have a whole entire data team that has is set up to be able to research this for us, not just one person. So we ask, we actually ask if anything comes up to come to email us and we'll do some research to make sure we are correct, which, you know, 99.997% of the time we are accurate. Cool. Cool. And you guys, I mean, a big part of your, your business model is that you're, you're keeping up to date with all the stuff. The accuracy is, it's gotta be, it's gotta be almost 100% accurate in order for it to, to be any, of any value. Yeah. We, we have, we, we do have a lot of data points, but to add value and to be reliable for carriers and contractors is that we have to have a certain percentage of accuracy. And one of the, th- one of the line items that we do not want to be wrong at all, ever, ever, ever is on ice and water shield. It's such a big ticket item. Um, the one other one that we're not wrong on that we know we were not wrong on is jurisdiction being right on the jurisdiction is something that has to be done. Otherwise, if you're wrong on jurisdiction, you assign the wrong codes, potentially, therefore everything's wrong. So those are the two things that we know that we are uh, like hundred percent accurate. If we find out that we're not, it's something that is, is very, very rare. It, it's only happened one or two times in the last six months. And we've processed over 45,000 uh, reports in the last uh, seven months. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Um, anything else you'd like to add? You want to talk about? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's interesting on the, um, like on the platform, what the access is, what people don't realize is that the time it's like, I associate, I use the Eagle view as a lot of a uh, comparison. And it's like, if I was going to go out and sit on a roof for two hours to measure it, is that really the best value of my, or the highest value of my time? Um, high, best use of my time, I should say. And why that's important to me is because I can go out and do more claims than adjuster, or I can go out and sell more roofs as a contractor. That tool is coming in handy and handier, and it's accepted in the industry. 
What we've heard from the carriers, which is really important, is that they are starting to realize that this tool can be a game changer just as much as Eagle View was a game changer to them 10 years ago or 11 years ago. It will be a game changer in today's world of being able to reduce potentially 80% of the reinspections associated with building codes. We are going to add in the permit side. Imagine being able to calculate what a permit costs so you can include the permit fee accurately so that that just removes that threshold or it takes away the chance that there's going to be supplement on the back end and that you get it right the first time. So it is simple as setting a final invoice release of depreciation. That's our goal. How can we get it to that point where it's just a in, help the adjuster have enough information to be able to write the estimate accurately and have a defensible estimate so that all the, all the contractor wants to do is just send a final invoice that says release depreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. And I think it can't be automation can't be understated. You know, when we talk about this kind of thing, it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, Eagle views, you know, if, if my, uh, <laughs> IA firm or the carrier isn't giving me an Eagle view, you know, I'm not going to bother with it. Um, cause it costs money, right? They don't, a lot of adjusters don't want to spend money out of pocket. Totally understand. Right. And no, nobody wants to have right. to pay for a bunch of stuff. <laughs> However, you know, especially in certain in certain parts of the comp- country, I'm not getting eagle views. I'm not buying roof pictometry because I've got two measurements, right? It's a it's a 312 straight gable that's 70 feet long and has a 19 foot front and back rafter. Why do I need to spend forty dollars to get two measurements, right? Um, however, right. In, in other parts of the country, though, or in other neighborhoods, even you know, you have a lot of architecturally interesting houses that have you know, 55 square roofs and there's, you know, 37 facets on that. 50 roof facets. All, <laughs> yeah. And they're all little like slivers of things that will hips sticking out and it offsets everywhere. Um, that could literally take you two hours to measure diagram and measure it because, it, and it's more dangerous too, because it's, those are going to be steeper roofs, generally speaking. And you got to mm-hmm. get down to the edge, get your tape on there. And you're spending a lot of time crawling around on this roof in the hot sun, when you could have spent 40 bucks, right? So what's your hour worth? Is it worth $40 or is it worth $240? Like if you're, if you could close mm-hmm. that claim in an hour because you had tools that made you faster by letting you take less time to do things, right? I think it's a, it's a, a great um, expense personally. You know, it's, it, I, I'm gonna do recon on my claims and say, oh, I have this neighborhood that, and these are all, Seven hundred thousand dollar houses. The roofs are all giant, cut up, and there's, they've got a bunch of outbuildings and stuff. I'm ordering eagle views on every single one of these claims. I'm not going to bother with those right. before I ever get out there, so I have those at hand, so that I can close that claim on site. Right. Same thing with the codes. If I go to Denver or any, really anywhere in Colorado, there's codes. I mean, it's it's code crazy. You go to other parts of the country, um, it may not be the case. Um, like you know, we'll say. Kearney, Nebraska, but they still have codes, right? And it may be that it's, it's something that's required. Um, but yeah, these tools, I mean, they, they, uh, the, the, the value that they add for the, for what they cost the adjuster, I think is, you know, for that automation and being able to close more claims, have higher production, which gets you more claims on that storm. You know, when you have high production and you have high quality claim, especially you're showing like a professional documentation in there, you know, you're, you've got a nice Eagle view, you've got a hover report, you've got one click code, you know, report for the permits and the, and the building codes and everything. And you did that in less time, you will, mm-hmm. you'll be turning down work. I, and I've, it may be a slight exaggeration, but I don't think so, especially during storm season, because right. they want you to, to be there because you're a professional. Especially if you tuck your shirt in, your door magnet's straight on your truck, right? And yeah. you don't have like a mustard stain down the front of your shirt. So <laughs> uh, the automation 100%. Thing, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And it's something that, uh, that adjusters, they wonder why they can't close more than four claims a day. And a lot of times it's because they don't understand how to, how to automate or to outsource certain processes that, you know, are very time consuming, but can be done better, you know, for a small expense by somebody else or some other service. Yeah. And then, you know, with our building code app, 
you know, it's, 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 it's becoming more and more popular. We're, we're getting, um, I think it's like 10 new users every day and most of them are contractors. So what we're doing is we're bringing, we're bringing forth, you know, hidden information to the general public. And all that's going to do is if you're an adjuster, you're going to be hearing about us more because the contractors are like, Hey, these are the codes. And in areas that right now, like you don't know about the codes, contractors are starting to find out about us because we know those codes and they're going to start presenting those as part of their case. Yep. Now that could be good or bad. You know, they, they could also cherry pick it and not present it when you're overpaying things like, Oh, that adjuster came out and just paid for ice and water shield. They think it's there. Ah. All right. I'm not going to send them anything. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like it's one of those things where they can cherry pick when they're going to send it to you or not. So just be, just be mindful that, you know, it's, it's, it's coming that like we are being adopted across on both contractors and adjusters. And that information that is currently hidden is now being brought to light. So local, local knowledge at a national scale. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're standing in front yard with the insured and the contractor and having a debate about ice and water shield and he pops his phone up and you don't have that that information and he does, you know, it's, it's the insured. I mean, they're going to get what they, they, they're supposed to get in the long run, but it kind of makes you look like a knucklehead. If you're, if you're like fighting with the contractor about ice and water yeah. and do you owe it? Right. And the, and the guy proved <laughs> I it. Know. So if, if people want to find more information about one click code and if they want to get signed up and anything, what are they, how do they find you? Uh, we are on the iOS and Android app store. Uh, we're also on the website, one click, code.com that's o-n-e click code.com um our subscriptions are really straightforward contractors generally opt for the local which means one state it, adjusters usually opt for the national which is nationwide depends on what your access is currently right now we have a 14-day trial you can sign up for free no credit card required just sign up and start using the crap out of it um, if you do like us which we think you will um, we would encourage you to pick a plan that best suits your needs. But remember, our plan is not really based on a per unit or per uh, per report. We did a, a general like subscription base. So it depends on your usage. There's a pro and pro plus, and we start as, as low as $29 and we go up to $99 based on what your volume is gonna be and whether you want local or national coverage, and that's per month. Um, right now we have uh, hundreds and hundreds of adjusters that are using us across the country. And we're, we're approaching the thousand of contractors across the country as well. Um, we do about, we should be doing about 85,000 reports this year alone without having any insurance companies buy directly from us, which is in the works. So finding us is simple um, and we are gaining traction and we just love to have you guys join the uh, one click team. If you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com slash podcast. This is Adjuster TV.